Trump administration is preparing to impose 15 percent tariffs on 160 billion dollars in Chinese goods. The deadline is set for Sunday. Uh, there is talk of a possible delay to those tariffs, which would hit consumer goods like toys, phones, laptops, clothes. Join us now. Congressman Kevin Brady, ranking member of the Ways and Means Committee. Congressman, um, it's good to see you, as it Morning, always Joe. is. Do you, what can you tell us about uh, uh, the state of the state, state of the uh, state of the negotiations that you know? Yeah, my sense is that they are, the parties have stayed at the table um, for recent months, that uh, they're making, they feel like they're making good progress. Uh, my sense is that they're actually tackling the priorities we hope will be in a phase one, the intellectual property issues, the ending the forest tech transfer, removing the barriers on financial service and agriculture, those type of issues plus enforcement. If, if those are reflected in a phase one agreement, I'll tell you that that would be a very successful agreement. You've never been the, the, the guy for palace intrigue. I, I don't know if I can get you to weigh in now, but are there two camps? Is there one pushing very strongly on not doing a deal because we're not getting enough uh, and, and leaking things that way? And then another uh, group of uh, insiders pushing the other way? You know, I, I haven't seen too much of that, honestly, Joe. It seems to me that this is one of those uh, areas where it's in everyone's interest to have a substantive agreement, China, U.S., all parties in the U.S. And so I think that's where they're heading. I think that's one of the reasons that there is a cautious optimism uh, around because I think the progress they've made is just seems, feels right. Hey, Congressman, can you rattle off that list again? I mean, you talked about trademark, a lot of IP, yeah. all those issues. I mean, I, you say those things, that would be a great phase one deal. No, I think that, my expectations and the market's expectations are much lower, maybe just no tariffs, and they buy a bunch of ad products. What would that deal look like to well, you? I, th I think the White House has been very careful not to oversell this, but to really go for the substance. Obviously, you know, theft of intellectual property is huge. It really has started all of this. This forcing tech transfer isn't just tech. This is our manufacturing sector. So a big reason we're in China, uh, obviously those barriers on the things we're good at selling, agriculture and financial services, uh, huge as well. And then uh, I think the biggest challenge always has been with China, lessons learned from past uh, uh, agreements with with former presidents is you've got to hold them accountable and I think they've spent a great deal of time there. So if that but phase one wraps those in, that's uh well that that really matters. If it if it's if it doesn't wrap all of that in, if it's a skinnier deal than that, would you think it's a good deal? Well I think the administration could have accepted a skinny deal uh much earlier than this. This is not why they got in the into this dispute. They want to redesign, reset that whole trading relationship. And, and if these are the types of issues, even a couple of those in phase one, that, that's substantive. Uh, Congressman, Peter Navarro is one of the, the, the players, obviously. And, and I don't know if he was really trying to hide anything when you use you know, the letters of your name to, uh, to, to make a nom de plume or a, a pen name. He's very hawkish, and, I mean, he does have some influence, so it's not just the rumors of palace intrigue that there's two camps here. Uh, it doesn't, it, you know, it, it doesn't really sound like he wants this to be done. It, who, who does Lighthizer listen to? I mean, obviously, a lot of people throw Lighthizer and Navarro into the same camp. You know, I think Ambassador Lighthizer, whether it's USMCA, Japan, South Korea's agreement, or this with China, you know, he's got a boss. And I think he knows where President Trump wants to go. He knows where this economy needs to go on trade, and he's been in this a long time. And so, I, look, I, I don't know about all that. But what I do know is, is there's a sense that they've made good progress. They're not going to rush into a bad deal. But, it's, but it feels like, you know, they're continuing to march forward, and that's, I think, a good thing.